Sets store non-duplicate items. It's very fast access compared to lists, and they support set operations. So union, intersect, I'll cover all those. Sets are unordered, so there's no way to sort a set or put it in sorted order. And let's look at the constructors for creating new sets. We basically use the curly brackets. And you can see here we set x equal to 3 comma 5 comma 3 comma 5. And what the set constructor does is it weeds out all the duplicate items. So it's going to give us a set back with just 3 and 5 in it. And we can create an empty set using the set constructor with just parentheses. And when we print that out, we see that we get an empty set. And then we can also pass in a list to the constructor of a set, just like we did with tuple. And when we print that out, we'll also see that, yeah, we get 2, 3, 4. It's converted to a set. Let's look at some of the set operations. Here we create a set with 3, 8, and 5. And then we print that set out. So we can see 8, 3, and 5. Now we do x.add7. So we can add an item to the set with using the add function. And when we print that out, we can see the 7 is added in. Keep in mind, these are in random order, so we don't know where the 7 is going to appear in the set. It, in this case, it happens to be at the end, but it's not in, in sorted order. These are in random order. So when we do x.remove3, it pulls the 3 out of the set. And we can see when we print 857, the 3 is gone. We can get the number of items in a set, or the length of a set, using the len function. And it's the same function that we used for sequence items such as string and list, it's the same. We can check membership in X. And again, this is very fast. It's much faster than lists for checking membership. Sets are just designed to be much faster in Python. So when we print 5 in X, we're going to get back a Boolean response, true or false. And since 5 is in X, we get a true. We can also pop a random item. We don't know if we're going to get the last item. We don't know which item we're going to get but we can pop an item off of the set and print it out. So if we do x.pop and then we do uh, print out what's left of x, we can see that we get we popped off the 8. We didn't know which item we were going to get, but we got the 8, and what's left is 5 and 7. And if we want to delete all the items from set x, we can do x.clear. And then when we print out the new x, we can see that we get an empty set. So some of the mathematical set operations I promised to cover. So here I have two sets, S1 and S2, with some values in them. And you can see that the 3 overlaps. We have a 3 in both sets. So intersection, or AND, is the ampersand sign. So we have set 1 and set 2 using the ampersand. So when we do AND, we're looking for the overlap. Items that are in both sets 1 and set 2. So when we do print S1 and set 2, we just get the item 3, and it's returned as a set. And then when we do OR, it's just a bar, a vertical bar. S1 bar S2. That gives us OR. And that's going to give us the set of items that is in either set. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 3 is in both sets, but it, took, it only gives us this 3 one time. And then there's symmetric difference, or exclusive OR. It's in set 1 but not in set 2. So it's an exclusive OR. And the items that are in one set but not in the other is 1, 2, and 4, 5. And the 3 is in both sets, so it doesn't give us the 3. And then a difference is an item that is in set 1 but not in set 2. So we can do set 1 minus set 2. And that's going to give us just the 1 and the 2. And then there's subset and superset. So you can determine if one set is a subset or a superset of the other using the less than and greater than and equal signs. Now let's look at dictionaries. Dictionaries are really cool. Basically dictionaries are key value pairs. So you have a key and then a value coordinated with it. And this is very similar to an associative array or a Java hash map. It's basically the same thing. And dicts are unordered. It's uh, that actually the keyword in Python is D-I-C-T and that means dictionary. So dicts are unordered, and here's, here we have three different ways of creating a dictionary, and you can see that the output from all of these is exactly the same. They all do exactly the same thing. 
x equals with curly braces, and we use a colon between the key and the value. If the key is a string, we need to put quotes around it. And since the values here are numerical, we don't need quotes. So we have pork, beef, and chicken. And here we just passed them in in curly braces with the colon. And here we passed them in in square brackets as tuples. You can see we have three separate tuples in square brackets. And then inside the dict constructor, which uses parentheses. So this way, I find a little more, uh, a little more complicated. Uh, but this, I think, is probably the simplest I put first. And then you can also just use this dict constructor where pork equals 25, beef equals 33. And note here, we don't need the parentheses, which is pretty cool. So some operations for dictionaries. We can add or update. So if we don't have shrimp in our dictionary yet. But if we say x of shrimp is equal to 38.2, if shrimp is already in the dictionary, it will update the value to 38.2. And if shrimp is not in the dictionary, then it's going to add it. So when we print out x here, it's added shrimp to our dictionary. To delete an item from the dictionary, we just do del x of shrimp with square brackets. And then we can see the new dictionary has no shrimp in it. If we want to get the length of dictionary x, we just use the same len function we've used for everything else. And to delete all the items from dict, we just use x.clear. Again, that's just a repetition. We already learned that up, up above. And to delete the entire dictionary, del x. So there you go. And to access some of the keys and values in a dictionary, let's create another dictionary here. It's exactly the same one that we used above. And then we'll print y.keys. So the key is basically pork, beef, and chicken. And you can see we print out the dict keys here. We get pork, beef, and chicken, and they're in the format of a list. And then we print out y.values. And it puts these values in a list for us. We get the numeric values. And if we want both, we want the key value pairs, we can print out y.items. And here we get dict y.items with uh, pork, beef, and chicken. We can also check membership. We can either check the membership in the keys or in the values. So to check membership in just the keys, we can say beef in Y, and that's automatically going to look in the keys for Y. If we want to check the membership in the values, in other words, 25.3 or something, we can say clams in Y dot values. Well, obviously clams is a key. It's not, it wouldn't, wouldn't be in the values. Uh, but the values here are all numeric, so it's definitely going to be a false, and we do get a false. But you can check for items in the values as well. So there are two different ways to iterate a dictionary. For key and y, print key and y with the key in the square brackets. And that way you can easily get both the key and the value. And you can see it prints out the key, the value, for all three items. Another way is if you need access to both the key and the value inside of your for loop, and you're going to use that a lot, then you could do 4k comma v, or doesn't matter what you decide to name these, but I chose to name them k and v, in y dot items. And y dot items is going to return both the key and the value. And it'll assign the key to the first variable and the value to the second variable. So we can print those out, and you can see you get the same result. So that's two different ways to iterate a dictionary. That wraps up this video on Python data structures. Again, I'm going to post this Jupyter Notebook on my GitHub site. I'll put the link in the comments. And if it's helpful, I hope you'll give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'm Joe James. Thanks for watching.